secret societies, the secret oaths, and the secret proceedings. Coming to you from the studio of them, still okay, and then this is stars, this is stars, planet X, planet X, the trance, the truth, this is drugs, this is try the best, try the best, try the best. Do you see the sequence star? Six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero, all engine running. Lift off, we have a lift go. Hi, this is Law Johnston. I'm making this video because something very big and very important is about to happen. First little background to kind of get everyone up to speed. It's very important for everyone to understand fully that the United States of America was conquered. And it was conquered a long time ago. It was done in stealth and secrecy. This is historical fact. For decades, great journalists like uh, G. Edward Griffin, Gary Allen, William Cooper, Eustace Mullins, Bill Still, and Jordan Maxwell have all clearly revealed this information to the world. The most critical element for conquering America was to control its currency and its banking system. In 1913, the Federal Reserve Act was passed without being ratified by Congress. At its inception, the Federal Reserve was completely controlled by British banks. They have been controlling the American economy ever since. I'll let award-winning economist Milton Friedman summarize. What do you think of the Federal Reserve Board today? Well, I have long been in favor of abolishing it. I think it, there is no institution in the United States that has such a high public standard and such a poor record of performance. The Federal Reserve System was established in 1914, started operation in 1914. It presided over a doubling of prices during World War I. It produced a major collapse in 1921. Then it, engaged, it, it undertook actions which led to the great, which led to a recession in 1929 and 30. And it converted that recession by its actions into the Great Depression. The major villain in the Great Depression was, in my opinion, unquestionably, uh, the Federal Reserve System. Since that time, it was largely, it presided over a doubling of prices during World War II. It financed the inflation of the 1970s. On the whole, it has a very poor record done far more harm than good. Once America's banking system was under control, it was actually very easy to infiltrate the political system. The legislative, the judicial, and the executive offices of government. The supreme goal, of course, being the presidency. I know what you're all thinking, but hold on. The American public is about to learn a dangerous truth. The warning you see on your screen now may go out across social and public media within a few days. I believe we need to take it very seriously. There's a very strong chance this operation will occur over the holidays as people will all be in their homes, stores will be closed, and there'll be minimal traffic. It is critical that people know about the possibility of martial law being temporarily implemented very soon. And it's also critical that you guys understand why this is happening. 
Pay close attention. A military intelligence operation of the largest scale has been underway for quite some time now. It is now in phase five of five. Many of you recently received the emergency presidential alert system on your cell phones. This is what it's for. There are over 60,000 sealed indictments right now. Many are for individuals in federal and local government, law enforcement, news media, entertainment, big industry, and big tech. We're about to see something unprecedented in the history of the world. We're gonna have to really keep our cool. The purpose of this executive military action is to reclaim the legislative, judicial, and executive branches of the government to restore the United States Constitution and the government itself to the people of the United States of America. A keystone of this operation is the Federal Reserve. In fact, the Rothschild Central Bank, the World Trade Organization, and the IMF are all coming down right now across the world. This is what's really happening in Europe. Every country has been given a unique opportunity to take back their sovereignty and nationalize their own bank. And I'll tell you what, they're taking this opportunity. Those of you that are familiar with the history and facts surrounding George Herbert Walker Bush may not be surprised to find that he did not die of natural causes. He was tried beginning in September money laundering, conspiracy to violate the Logan Act, human trafficking under the RICO Act. He pled guilty to these charges in order to avoid a military tribunal, which would have included several acts of treason. The greatest of these being the assassination of John F. Kennedy. George Herbert Walker Bush was executed by lethal injection November 30th. 2018. Ten trillion dollars was seized from the Bush CIA Black Operations Program. It is critical that people understand the possibility of martial law being temporarily implemented very soon. And you also need to know why it is happening. All my sources indicate this is very real. If martial law has to be declared during this military operation, you will be informed by the emergency broadcast system. Just follow directions, try and stay out of the way. There will be a full disclosure to the people of the United States. In fact, all of this is being done right out in the open on the 4chan and 8chan networks. Thousands of civilians have been helping in this process. The operation is known as Q. Research what is happening and spread the information across your networks. Get your cameras ready. We may be able to document this. For everyone else, sit back and watch the show. Provisions are in place to keep the store market shelves stocked, to keep the utilities running, and to keep the economy running. Hold on tight. Our prayers have been answered. Our entire reality is about to change. God bless, God speed. And welcome to the Best Damn Podcast. I'm your host, John Keane. As always, I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. As that you please, add, follow, and subscribe. And remember, check us out, www.spreaker.com, forward slash user, forward slash Best Damn Podcast. Also, check us out, youtube.com, forward slash C, forward slash The Best Damn Podcast. And remember, support this channel, support my work, www.paypal.me forward slash best damn podcast and patreon.com forward slash best damn podcast guys we got a big 
episode for you tonight. Man, I'm so happy to be back home here on Spreaker, hitting you with a radio broadcast. It's so much fun. I mean, I love doing these things, and this is where I started out. This is where I feel the most comfortable and Dude, it's just like a whole nother energy. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. I love my YouTube peeps and I, I love the live stream. It's a very cool and unique experience. But damn, this is awesome. And I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be back. And I'm going to give you guys some fire tonight. So I hope you enjoy. Um, I'm going to be discussing and I'm joined. First off, don't let, let me be rude here. Um, I am joined by my friend, the... And a very intelligent and informed person at that. And I respect his opinion a great deal. Kind of a surprise guest, really. And a great treat for all you guys tonight. And most of you will know, because he's been on the show several times, that um, he brings a a, a big punch. You know, especially when it comes to politics and the things we're going to be discussing tonight. And that is none other than my special co-host and guest, Brett Peters. Say what's up to the audience, Brett. What's up, audience? (laughs) How you doing, John Boy? I'm doing great, bro. I'm doing great. I'm so glad you're here, man. Um, It it was was last minute, man. Like, last second, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. but it's fate, though, man. That's the way we we roll, right? (laughs) Exactly. But you know what? Um, To be honest, with what we're about to be discussing, there's really no better man for the job than you, bro. And, I mean, I couldn't have picked... You know, a, a better guy to to do this and cover what we're going to be discussing tonight uh, than you. So I'm extremely pumped that you know I, I literally he he come in on the live chat on Spreaker and I'm like, hey, call in, jump on. <laughs> so <laughs> you're too you're too kind, man. I you know I I don't know what I bring to the table. I just bring my opinion, and and it's going to vary, you know, from from other other listeners out there. I mean, and I'm just trying to figure this out just like everybody else is. Well, that's right, bro. That's right, bro. We're all hanging out on the same rock right now, and we're we're all you know we all have our our own limited perspective and our own authentic point of view. And one of the things that's super cool about Brett, man, you know, is you're not gonna see him get on my show, and you know, there. They, he, he he doesn't try to um, compromise his point of views just because he's on uh, you know m- my channel at all. He 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 treats it like it's his own, and he brings his own thoughts, his own perspective, and it's always refreshing and informed. So that's why I love to Thank have you. you. I love to have you. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. So tonight, guys, this is what we're going to be discussing here. Um, you know, you could probably uh, tell from the title, it said, Enough is Enough. And I showed the Illuminati card uh, titled, Enough is Enough, with the face of none other than President Donald Trump. And this was from 1995. I believe that was like the reissue from the 1991 Illuminati the Card Game, uh, which, in fact, was created by Stephen Jackson, who is known to be the great, great, great grandson of Nostradamus. So that's just kind of a unique fact. Uh, definitely Masonic ties and witchcraft and soothsaying and all that stuff. But, you know, um, think about the accuracy that these cards have brought to the table. And that card in particular, I believe it says anywhere you're at, any place, our snipers can get you or something like that, predicting the assassination or an assassination attempt on Donald Trump. What do you think, Brett? You know, um, I think you and I have talked about this once before, John, maybe even more than once, but I, I don't believe that anybody can sit in the White House and hold that office uh, without having some kind of target, uh, you know, on them. Um, I don't think anybody can, can, can sit in that position and, and not have, um, you know, a true concern about their life or the lives of their loved ones. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. And uh, let's just say this. Uh, recently, um, if you kind of been checking out the, the right wing media, the, the conservative uh, propaganda, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, you know, we've seen a lot of parallels being drawn to JFK 
as of recently, uh, secret meetings um, of elites, you know, uh, surrounding the removal of Trump. Uh, we've known he's had, you know, issues with his security, right? And that um, the Secret Service is, has turned on other presidents in the past, man. So I, I believe that it has to happen. That, And I'm not calling for, please, don't think, don't kick down my door, Secret Service. I'm not calling for the assassination of the president in no way, shape, or form, right? I, I, I don't want that, and I'm not asking for that. But I am saying, though, that I believe that uh, we're going to see an attempt at least because I believe that Trump, in fact, has a spot in the Holy Bible, Right? I feel like he comes from the book of Revelations, and he is the beast who leads the whole world astray and receives a fatal wound to the head. So, I mean, I could be wrong, but, you know, I, I, I think he could fit that description. So, you know, and judging from, you know, the Simpsons have a lot of predictive programming, you know, witchcraft in them. They've showed him in a casket. You know, um, the Illuminati card game, predictive programming, witchcraft, you know, they're showing him being assassinated. One of the crazy things um, with reverse speech technology that was developed by David Oates, okay? And this is a, I won't get super in-depth in this, but you guys should check it out. Check out David Oates' reverse speech technology. What they can do now is we are, we're truly beings of light. We are not made to be deceptive and to lie. And this is so proven by, um, in our speech. Whenever we tell a lie forwards, you can literally do what's called backward masking. Most people who remember the rockers from the 60s and 70s will, will know of like Led Zeppelin having, uh, yes. sa satanic messages. You've heard of that, right, Brett? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, now, if you reverse anybody's speech, if I tell a lie fr frontwards, in my speech backwards, about every four syllables, my brain will unconsciously put together words, formulate words, and tell you the truth. It's insane. It's insane. And JFK, in a speech he made, was talking about being assassinated backwards. Well, guess what? One of Donald Trump's speeches talks about the, uh, the brand of a sniper rifle. In his speech backwards. So you guys just kind of kind of look look for this stuff, man. It's crazy and it's out there. Neil Armstrong talking about being ashamed and how they got earth rocks in his moon landing interview. I mean, wild, wild <laughs> stuff. You know, There's, there is so much of that going on right now. In fact, it's funny that you you brought up you know uh, the moon landing because I was just watching uh, a YouTube video. Uh, you know, talking about you know Kubrick. Uh, having uh, faked the moon landing and okay. how they set that all up. Mm -hmm. uh, how Donald, Rum Don Donald Rumsfeld uh, was actually uh, advising uh, who was the who was the president at the time, um, Nixon, yeah. and how they were in collaboration to to actually pull that that uh, that <laughs> off, wow. and how it all went down with Kubrick. Uh, you know, uh, being sweet talked into doing it, and uh, they shot it over a weekend. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Well, and well, you know and what? So they had to, they basically had two they had two individuals that were helping them do it that were going to be in the astronaut uh, suits. Okay. Uh, both had to be single men, mm -hmm. and they both had to sign a contract saying that they would not uh, disclose anything uh, in regards to uh, their role in the making of that uh, that movie. Wow. And you know what? Kubrick's been involved in um, quite a bit of stories about you know faking moon landings and trips to space, you know, he's heavily oh. involved in, in that. And, and the Illuminati. I mean, the, the eyes wide shut very well may have cost him his life. True. Very true. Very true. And you know what? It's a, it's a weird thing you mentioned, uh, uh, Nixon, because the parallels also, not just from Trump to JFK, but Trump to Nixon and Reagan, okay, um, are extreme, including the Make America Great Again. This was actually a slogan from Nixon's campaign that he stole, reinvented, and made it new again, right? Make America Great Again. That was from Nixon. Um, I, I mean... You know, I'm sorry, John. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, a lot of people don't know that, say. that he... And Roger Stone, who actually started off as his... 
his his basic his campaign manager so to speak i don't know if he was ever awarded the official the official role and title but roger stone created donald trump as a politician and he managed the campaigns of nixon and reagan so you can see you can see how that that sly snake roger stone has definitely had a lot to do with trump and um his his, his sticky hands are all over Oh, it's all good, brother. His his sticky hands are all over, you know, um, Reagan and Nixon, and you can see a lot of those same trademarks on Donald Trump, you know, from Roger Stone. And who have you ever seen, have you ever seen a Netflix documentary, um, the one about Roger Stone, something about who, something Roger Stone? Get me Roger Stone. I have not. I have not. It's incredible. Tell me more about it. It's incredible. It's incredible. People need to really check out Get Me Roger Stone. It's a Netflix documentary, and it talks about how he created Donald Trump as a politician, how he invented that persona, and that he derived almost all the tricks that he got. The Dirty Trickster is his nickname, Roger Stone, and he got those tricks for Trump from you know the Nixon and the Reagan campaign. You know, so he he's been successful in the past. So, you know, I, tonight, guys, we are going to, we're going to get into quite a bit, okay? I want to try to be as fair and balanced as I can, but also at the same time, um, you know, just who I am, dude, who I am, and I, and I can't change that for people just to make some, some happy, okay? Um, and I got to be true to myself as well, and I'm going to give my, my honest opinions and my honest takes on things too. So we're going to take a look at... You know, the QAnon PSYOP, right? And I, I, I hate to come off and say PSYOP. We're going to take a look at QAnon. And we're going to look at the truth around it. And we're going to look at the PSYOP factor, right? And it's connections to, um, you know, what many people believe a very detailed and large scale psychological warfare operation being ran on the masses, being ran on the conservative right, you know. Um, and we're, we're going to look at, you know, some aspects of Trump as well, uh, the good and the bad. And we're going to look at a little bit of everything in between, you know, the rumors of martial law and, uh, the nationwide blackout, uh, economic collapse, you know, what does all this mean? Um, uh, as we travel down the rabbit hole tonight, we're also going to take a look at what happened in Astoria, Queens. In New York City, right? Them crazy electric blue lights. And if you guys see my videos on YouTube, um, I explained in great detail about um, the geomagnetic, um, you know, connection of electricity to the atmosphere and how I thought that what took place probably was a result from a celestial body. And it's so weird that I said that, right, Brett? Because then the very next morning I wake up and what do I find? A picture of a giant spear over the top of the site where the substation exploded. So Well, and you also saw what looked like um, to be beams that were, you know, so there, there's so many things that are, like, throwing me off as to what's going on. I, I don't know if everybody else saw it, but there looked like there were actually blue beams, like dew, mm-hmm. directed energy weapons, mm-hmm. that were being, that were coming down on top of those transformers that blew, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, a, a parallel to Paradise, California. Yes. So, you know... There's a lot of stuff. I'll be quite honest with the listeners and with you as well, because you and I haven't had a chance to talk. There is so much information out there that it gets you to a point where you don't know which way is up. <laughs> True. You know, I'm truly stretching my head on on what what in the world's going on here. So it's no wonder that people out there in general are are confused or being led one way versus another when there's so many. Um, when you say misinformation, psyops, there, there's an awful lot of it, yeah. in my opinion, yeah. uh, that's going on that that is confusing us as to what is truly happening. And so, at the end of the day, do any of us really know? That's that's a very very um, good and valid question, Brett. I'll tell you this, man. The last 
few days or a week or so, I have been hammering out the content. I mean, hammering it out. Two, yes, three, four videos a day. And the research, I mean, it's been nonstop. And you know how I get, man. I get to the point to where I'm literally falling asleep and stuff on the phone, right? Because um, sure. <laughs> because I, I just go like crazy, right, on this information. I'm eating it all up. I'm absorbing it. I'm processing it. And then I disseminate it, you know. Um, and I try to connect it. And uh, one of the things is, man, I'm finding, you know, that I'm usually a, a fairly – good judge of good info from bad i'm usually a fairly good judge of you know what exactly a situation is i can kind of look at it man sometimes first glance and and call it right just like uh the situation um in the in the new york skies right i said hey that that i didn't have any pictures or evidence but i said i think that this is the reaction from a celestial body right lo and behold you know the very next day we we get evidence that that supported that and it's not me bragging or tooting my own horn but i i have a good radar for this stuff i've been doing it for a while and even myself follow it it serves you well well you know even myself though lately you know someone that i would consider that has a good radar i've noticed that there's been a lot of a lot of stories um a lot of things that have coming up where you know, I can't call it either way, right? I'm kind of looking around like, uh, hmm, I, you know, I don't really have the answer for you right now, people, you know? Um, and this is definitely the age of deception and the age of confusion. And people need to really, really, now more than ever, you know, use their discernment, right? Use their discernment. Do your own research, right? Um, question everything. Question everything. And when you come to a conclusion or you draw a conclusion from something, make sure that it's your own, okay? Don't, don't allow someone else to tell you what the truth is or to, right? You know, Brad, I mean. Well, and, and also to keep an open mind because even if you come to that conclusion, you still may not have all the information. You may have come to a conclusion based on what you, you've come across so far, mm -hmm. but always keep an open mind to the fact that you may not have all the information and that there may be another truth out there. Absolutely, absolutely. And we see a, a ton of this, man, where, you know, um, people do. They put, they connect the dots and they, they get a picture of something in their head and they've done their own research, but then they don't budge on, you know, what, what the answer is they arrived at. You know, and that's a, a fatal mistake because there's always new information. And one of the ways to really get to truth is to allow your ideas uh, and perception of things to remain fluid, right? That way you can adjust it as you do receive new information and learn new things. So, um. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, the information that's out there, um, you know, always be willing to, to consider somebody else's perspective because the information could be, you know, your perspective on the information. So we both have the same information. But your perspective and my perspective may not be the same. And, and it's not until you actually consider somebody else's per perception or perspective that, that leads you to a, a whole new conclusion of your own. Absolutely, absolutely. And I want to shout out Shirley Graham in the chat. I appreciate everybody who, uh, who comes by the speaker for the, for the live chat, man. Um, I know it's not, you know, quite as, uh, you know, fantastical as YouTube live streams and there's not as many people that hop on it here, but I'm trying to really, you know, draw the listeners over here so we can kind of create that environment on this platform as well. Um, that's why, you know, I still use it. And, um, plus, dude, think about it. Just a couple months back, YouTube went down. You know, who's to say that YouTube will always be there? So. Right. Exactly. So this is my, you know, this this is used to be my primary place where I broadcast from, and now it's kind of become the backup plan. But you know, I, I still want I still want to use it. And I want people to be familiar with it, and I want people to you know um, come here and listen and get the live experience. And you know, you can call in as well, guys. Um, if you want to, you know, if you do want to be a caller on the show, um, the number is five one three. 
783-1762. It's 513-783-1762. What you need to do is to send a text message from the number that you want to be called on. And uh, with your name, your location, your state, where you're calling from, right? And maybe a sentence about what what your question or what you want to talk about. And at the end of the show, towards the end of the show, I will announce when I'm taking callers. And um, I will, will call you, right? And if you don't answer, I, I move to the next one. So if people are interested in that. And usually if I get a few people that want to do that, you know, I'll, I'll open up the phone lines. If I don't get much of a response, I just... I, I roll right past it, bro. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, John, and I, this is your show, brother. So you you lead, and I will follow. But man, you you sound like you have a lot of really interesting topics to cover tonight. So, Absolutely. what do you think is is the most interesting? What do you think that you want to cover first? Okay, well. Um, you heard, uh, I, I'm assuming you heard the introduction, right? Um, th- this message, uh, that's kind of went viral, uh, on, on the net, man. Um, you know, this, this trust the plan, uh, QAnon, right? We're hearing this nonstop. Trust the plan, QAnon, trust the plan. Uh, and these, it's now up to, I think it's 60,000. Sealed indictments, and let me just kind of paint a few stats before we jump into this. Um, you know, there was, you know, George Bush Sr. had a funeral. There were envelopes passed out. It was caught on uh, tape. You know, and I say caught on tape in quotations because we don't know if that was intentionally put on tape or what. But these envelopes, you know, got a big stir where people think that, you know, these they're, they're getting their indictments or they're getting these warnings. And you can see, like, Jeb Bush, dude, he does, like, his ass puckers mm-hmm. up, dude. It really does. It looks like it does. Well, the, the reaction of everybody that's caught on, on uh, camera is, is, is pretty obvious. Um, you know, even from, you know, uh, George, you know, uh, Jr. to his wife to, to Jeb, um, you know, Hillary doesn't, she kind of looks untased, although you can see that she obviously has an envelope all on her lap. Um, but, it, it, you know, even all the way to Pence, Mike Pence, the VP, mm-hmm. um, you know, so is that, again, is that disinformation or is that is that a, truly a breadcrumb? I mean, what is it? Yeah, and that and that is the question. You know, you get this video that follows uh, that we played in the introduction where they're saying, hey, uh, after the Christmas holiday, basically expect martial law. Um, and you remember the emergency alert systems test, the presidential emergency alert system. Hey, buddy. The emergency alert systems test that was, um, that was uh, put out over the... Early, yeah, early October December. 3rd. Yeah. October 3rd, right? And um, okay. which was postponed from September 20th. We know that Donald Trump and used executive order in December of 2017 to activate national emergency, right? For corruption, pedophilia, treason, right? All these different things. And then we know that in March of 2018, um, he went and made it instead of. He basically circumvented the judicial system by making it to where there would be military tribunals during this national emergency for those uh, laws. We know that since uh, Guantanamo Bay was was shut down, he reopened it, not only um, renovated, but expanded on Guantanamo. Um, You know, the supposed 60,000 sealed indictments. The message, viral message and warning, uh, martial law, QAnon, you know, and these breadcrumbs that he's been leaving about, you know, what's going to take place and these arrests, you know, the with letting sessions go. I mean, there's been so many different things around this, man. And I think people, you know, he, he ran on, you know, lock her up, right? Hillary for prison. If he does not fulfill this promise, if he does not fulfill this promise, I don't see him being reelected. So, 
Um, but I don't think he's going to fulfill this promise. I don't think he has any intention on it. I mean, where do you stand with this, Brett? What do you think is going on? You know, um, you know, there's a part of me that, you know, to be honest with you, John, um, you know, w- wants to believe that he, he is uh, truly trying to do great things for our country. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, and, and I think the reason that, that, I, that I and probably so many people want to believe that is, I mean, we want to have some hope. You know, we don't want to believe that, you know, we've got just another uh, individual in the office that is, is serving, uh, you know, the deep state or the Illuminati or, you know, the powers that be that are, that are that stand against good. A subscriber good. called it hope porn, Brett. <laughs> well, and so, you know, I, I, so for me, um, you know, I'm going to be really interested to see what, what 2019 will bring. You know, uh, information that I that you and I haven't had a chance to talk about, but I thought was worth mentioning if, if you hadn't seen it already or heard about it. But, you know, I'm hearing stories that, you know, that George uh, Bush Sr. did not die of natural causes, but was, in fact, executed. Yes, um, and, and that viral video he, stated he was executed. You're right. That he was executed, and, and that it was done on the sly to protect his, in quotation, good name or his legacy, if you will. I'd also heard where John McCain had been put to death uh, for treason. Um, there's even some video online that you can find where um, uh, I can't remember who the individual was. It was a gentleman. He was either Senate or the House, where he. It's almost like it's a slip of the tongue where he says it wasn't just for 24 hours that John McCain was put to death. Um, mm. and, and so you've got this information out there. So, um, And you also have a, a pretty legit, I think, uh, YouTube channel, uh, David Zublik, uh, I believe, Truth Unsealed, mm-hmm. who, who does a, a, a really um, uh, crazy um, story that talks about uh, yes, those were indictments that were handed out. Yes, this is going to come to pass. Uh, yes, you know, um, both McCain and Bush were, were executed. Um, so there's, there's a lot of information out there that kind of wants to lead you in that direction that, yeah, Trump is, is doing some stuff. I mean, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to believe, I'd like to hope that, that he is there uh, to... To, to really turn this country around. But then there's there's also this other side of me, too. Like I told you before we got on air, there's a tug of war going on with me, and I'm sure with a lot of people, mm-hmm. um, that you don't know which what is which way is up, which way is down, mm-hmm. what is correct. Um, you know, and, and it's, and again, just trying to make sense of everything. But uh, had you heard some of the stuff that I'm mentioning? Is this all news to you? Or you know, it sounds like you, you had been exposed to this. Is that right? Yeah, um, for the most part, and, you know, I'm not going to knock the guy that you mentioned's YouTube channel or anything like that, but I believe that a lot of these channels are, um, you know, and and I'm getting called this now, Brett, which is so funny. It's so funny um, that people are now starting to call me controlled opposition. Um, (laughs) It's hilarious to me, but, you know... You can't, listen, you can't... You, if, you, if you pick one side or the other, or you're leaning to the left or the right on any of these, the, the other side is going to say that about you. Yeah, but here's the thing, bro. I don't support neither side, right? So what, how would I be a controlled opposition if I don't like either? <laughs> you know, it makes no well, sense. Well, that's, that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, but, I mean, it, it, it sounds like maybe um, you, you kind of made up your mind about Trump. Yeah, yeah. I have, and I'll tell you why. I mean, I'll tell you why. Um, He's done more to censor free speech than the last 10 presidential candidates combined, Um, you know, with the the laws and the bills that he signed, um, you know, censoring the net and just so many different things to really... To, to shut free speech down, and we've seen it completely be locked down since he's entered office. I mean, that's all happened right. under his watch. Um, and I thought that I'd never see anybody, you know, worse than Obama with his Ministry of Truth crap, right? I just thought that that was... So Trump has really surprised me with what he's done, especially... 
to conservative media on top of it, you know? And that's what so, lets me know that um, he is not who he says he is. We've seen him ban bump stocks, you know, the Hillary for prison he ran on. As soon as he got elected, he didn't mention a word about it. And Hillary's great, right. da 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 you know? And then this, this QAnon. Now, let me mention something that Bush Jr., in his administration, had something very, very similar, guys. And it was called Nasara was the name of it, okay? And it was just like QAnon. Just like, okay? I think the only difference was that in, in this PSYOP, they claimed that Bush was somehow working to help Americans, blah, 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 right? And to, and to trust the plan and that benevolent aliens, I think, were going to intervene and help was the end game of theirs, right? And it was horse shit, flat out lies. And QAnon is, I mean, and you, and whoever, if you haven't checked into Project Nasara or Operation Nasara, guys, under the Bush administration, look at it. And I promise you, you will think you've seen a ghost when you read QAnon. Because it's very similar. I think they're, your, they're both artificial intelligence. I think they're both AI, right? Because QAnon doesn't tell you. People act like he's giving you some deep secrets. Bullcrap. He's giving you all things you can search on the web. It's a compilation of news stories and things that are out and available. It's nothing top secret at all. Nothing classified. What is your take on uh, that, that Q could, in fact, be uh, JFK Jr.? No. 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 And there was a guy, the, the inventor, Lee Wilberger, he done an investigation on QAnon and ran traces, right? He used to work for the CIA, the FBI, I mean, Department of Defense. This guy's been, and that's what he was, surveillance and counter-surveillance, right? He was in... 20 years or more, um, you know, with the military, and he, he worked for the Five Eyes. I mean, this guy has a a for real deal uh, resume when it comes to this. And he ran a um, counter-surveillance operation on QAnon himself. And what he found was that the people, first off, that QAnon seemed to be um, an AI system, that was compiling uh, data and stories from conservative media headlines and um, independent media headlines um, and basically putting them together and creating narratives and puzzles out of those narratives to lead people, right? Uh, second off, that QAnon um, was definitely not a Q clearance, not an insider, and I'll tell you why here in a second. Um, in third and foremost, that QAnon was actually ended up being connected to some guys in uh, a Bitcoin type of cryptocurrency, right? Like uh, three or four different people, uh, you know, a, a group of cryptocurrency people. So, I mean, it's, it's very strange, you know, and Lee Wilbarger, uh, you know, he's, like I said, man, he's had a, a very, a very long time in, in that side of things. And he really did it. And, um, you know, that's what he came up with. Now, let me just say this, that about two months, maybe two months after QAnon debuted, um, he, he had a trip code in the beginning. This is what most people who follow him now don't understand. That as an Anon, okay, he had a trip code that verified his authenticity and who he was, right? That trip code was compromised two months after he started, okay? And he came from a new trip code after that, right? Well, about... A year, nine months into it, that trip code was then compromised. And that's when you see in the takeover of the people like Alex Jones and Jerome Corsi. And it went really mainstream after the second trip code compromise. 
right? And then a month after that, the trip code was compromised for like a third time. So let me just tell you that the, if there was if there was an original QAnon, he he disappeared a month or two after this started. Um, it appears to be. Uh, completely controlled by insiders into Bitcoin and right-wing politics. And you see the connections to Jerome Corsi, Alex Jones. I mean, it's, it's controlled opposition is written all over this. And look, he also was debunked. Remember when he showed the picture uh, of a supposed fake-ass uh, presidential pin, right? Um, and was trying to act like he was in the president's office and was in a mirror and it was all fake. Nobody remembers these things. He was, he's been debunked before and the trip code was compromised. And it's like people just got on the bandwagon, right? Um, over the last year or six months or so, but don't remember that people like me followed him in the beginning from the start. Right. Like I was, I was on it from the start, and I, I I followed the puzzles and everything. And after that trip code was compromised the first time, I knew. I thought, well, this is done, and I watched, you know, just for a little while longer. And when I seen it be debunked, you know, with the presidential pin and all that, man, um, and Corsi and all them get involved, I knew. I knew then for a fact. I already knew before that, but. You know, it was the confirmation um, out in the open. And QAnon has led into a lot of people becoming targeted individuals. There's been a lot of nefarious crap that stemmed off of QAnon that's led people down bad roads, man. So, so what do you think? What do you think that, that, that you know, others will wake up uh, to this? Uh, because there is no doubt whatsoever that Q... Uh, whoever or whatever it may be, it's got a huge following out there. They, they right? won't, so, Brett. I mean, and I'll tell you why. Look, there is a virus, right? It's called the Keck virus. Um, and you know that Keck the frog that, that, that with the uh-huh. memes yeah. and how Alex Jones and, and Trump and there's the Illuminati Naughty card of, I think it's the frog prince and that's supposed to be Trump as well, right? This Keck virus is an optical virus that goes through the iris of your eye through imaging. And when you look at a lot of the QAnon puzzles, Cicada 3301 exposed this, as well as Quinn Michaels, the computer uh, programmer, that inside of a lot of these puzzles and images is um, MK Ultra programming and traces of Keck virus in there. So people are literally being brainwashed to death by doing these puzzles. Not just, you know, with the propaganda and the neuro linguistic programming because they're using um you know a lot of a lot of NLP. Um, you know, they're they're invoking feelings of uh hope and tr- that's why it's trust the plan and they're um creating division and calling them libtards and creating a negative connotation right that's all emotional triggers guys it's to, that way you don't think and you react off of an emotional response well not only that but these these images having literal um you know it's got hidden symbolism inside the image sure. Guys, all you have to do is take one of his pictures. Take one of his pictures, one of his codes, or or one of his um, puzzles, and strip the images down, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Or check out the Cicada 3301 videos. I I feel like Defango done some, Quinn Michaels did some. Guys, I'm telling you, it's not what you think it is. It's everywhere. And, 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 you know, John, you you bring up a great point there, because it's not just in the Q-Post. This can be found in uh, regular TV programming, movies. Uh, the symbolism is, is way more powerful than, than most give it credit for. Uh, simply seeing, uh, you know, a symbol can have a, a very powerful effect on the psyche. Well, you hear me talk about this a lot, Brett, that symbol, okay, when, it, when the reason why symbolism is so important and so powerful, because a symbol is a representation of um, 
a frequency okay. or an, an, an right. entity connected to that frequency. So when you observe it with your eyes, even if it's hidden, your eyes still pick it up. Even though you don't see it and recognize it, your eyes do, okay? And that travels through your optical nerve into your brain. And what happens is you make an energetic connection to the symbol, right? Which is attached to the frequency or entity you know, associated with that said symbol. So, right. <laughs> you know, th- it, you're literally when, when, being programmed and you're literally worshiping Satan and, and all these things by by looking at pictures. Did, did you happen to catch and uh, catch the, uh, uh, this was recently brought up, I think, on uh, Jacob Israel's channel about the emojis, um, about the seven, 70 symbols that, these emojis are actually tied to some ancient symbols. I know this sounds crazy, but and if you haven't seen it, it's pretty interesting. I can't speak intelligently about it, but I did find it interesting enough to where I wanted to do some more research on it. Uh, but uh, on Jacob's channel, he, he talks about, and he goes, I know this sounds crazy, but um, there had been a lot of research into these emojis and how we use these and how we very well may be using these symbols unknowingly mm-hmm. uh, and how it is affecting our interactions with one another. Absolutely, and let me just tell you this, that it's not just emojis, guys. All the way down to the computer chips inside of a computer, they use what's called masks to to lay these chips on top of one another. They are all ancient symbolism and satanic symbols. Literally, the the beast system, uh, or AI, the God of AI is also the God of this world, which is Satan. And that's why people should check out Hopi NG's channel because he exposes Bell Labs and all of this stuff on that channel, man. Um, you know, I talk about this stuff a lot too, man. It goes right in with the Saturn Moon Matrix. I mean, and if you think of Archons and how they're, they're known, to be able to manipulate reality. They're the jinn. They're the genies. They can literally cause you to see things that are not there. And that's part of the Saturn Moon Matrix, right? It's creating a sub-frequency through sound and through, through visual that is literally transmitting a false reality matrix over the one we already live in and holding us at a lower vibration um, also, uh, pulling emotion out of us, keeping us in an emotional left brain state. That way they can control us because they need us to be under their frequency, under their vibration, um, to keep us under control. Now, if we, we raise ours above that, we're, we can't be controlled, right? We're more powerful. Um, and people just, they don't understand, you know, and they call me a nut job and a moron. And I've been, I'm telling you, Brett, I got, 16,000 views on that uh, QAnon video I did uh, and and climbing and they have ripped me a new one. I mean, all the way up and down the comments. It, it, it's I haven't, hate. Had a to check, I haven't had a chance to check it out, but you know, obviously you, you hit a nerve somehow, for sure. Well, it's it sounds like. For this right here. It's for telling people that it's a psyop they and that's why because look they use the neuro linguistic programming they they use the uh you know they they use the the mind controlling techniques and guess what whenever somebody says it's fake uh it triggers an emotional response <laughs> they defend right. the lie man um they, it's yeah. stockholm yeah. syndrome you're def- you're defending the one enslaving you Right, exactly. Yeah, and it's just, it's it's so, again, man, it goes back to what I had said earlier, which, you know, there is so much, you know, how much do we even know that, um, you know, where we're going is even of our own free will, right? True. How, how, how much, how much uh, you know, is the information that we think we believe are, are, are actually, um, you know, considering um, to be even of our own accord? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I, there's a there's a brand new um, show out on Black Mirror on Netflix. Have you heard of it? Yes. Yes. Uh, you talking about Dude, uh, what's it called, uh, Brett? Brand, brands, brands work, brands with brand, brand something. God, it just jumped out of my head. 
but it, I mean, it's basically, and this is something that that made me think about when I was a kid. It's, it's a story, but in the movie form, where you get to choose, you get to make choices, mm-hmm. and that your choices you make lead you to a whole other ending, right? Yep. So I remember reading the adventure books as a kid, and I used to think that was so cool because you know it's. It was one of those books, and you're you're talking about like Lord of the Rings type stuff, right? Yeah, you know, you're an elf or whatever, and <laughs> you get to make a choice, and and your choices, you know, lead you to greatness or doom, right? Absolutely. Well, that, they're playing on that. This it's one simple episode with multiple different choices with multiple different endings, and I think I think where this is going to lead you is, um, is there an illusion of free will? Is free will simply an illusion? Mm. Mm. Well, and you know what? One of the things about QAnon is I've heard it be uh, referred to as a LARP, a live action role playing game, right? So literally, these people are following this game, but who's to say that they aren't part of a deeper, darker satanic game that they're unaware of like what's been exposed by quinn michaels known as the game 23 which is an occult satanic ritual to sacrifice people (laughs) did john jerry do a movie that was called 23 yes yep 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 it's yes that that number is very ago but that you just just made me think of that yeah, that number's huge in uh, the occult and satanic, uh, you know, numerology, gematria, symbolism, uh, cabalism. Skull and bones. Skull, Skull and bones, bones right. yes, yes, yes. And see, yeah. that's, that's the thing, Brett. Right now, this should be shaking the, the shit out of, um, you know, someone asleep to this right now. This should be shattering your perception of what you think of QAnon and, you know, this whole psyop. Look, Donald Trump reminds me of a character from the book 1984. The, the character is Goldstein, right? And he does what's called controlled opposition. Um, you know, right before the society basically goes into the complete grip of this police state, this dystopian nightmare, there's a guy who comes along named Goldstein. He pretends to be completely against the system, just like Trump. I mean, exactly like him. And guess what he does? He sets them all up and leads them to the slaughter. He wants to bring out the ones who are going to fight against it, man. It's <laughs> right. So, so in your opinion, I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm still undecided. I got to be honest with you uh, when it comes to. Trump's motives. Um, mm. Although you're persuading me a little bit more each each time you and I talk, um, but again, I'm still I still have you know I, I want to have some hope. Um, but you know, I, for me, I, I, I think, and I'm and I'm probably going to answer my own question. Uh, but I, I'm curious what yours is. I mean, I, I want to. I think that in the next thirty days, the next thirty to sixty days, I'm going to really be lean one way or the other on how I feel about Trump and and how all this is going to play out. Um, because, I, you know, I feel like most Americans, you know, we want to see some justice. We want to see, uh, you know, individuals that have broken the law, mm-hmm. like Hillary Clinton, you know. Um, we want to see justice served, right? Yeah, and absolutely. I, and, and, you know, and so many of us are hopeful that that'll, that'll happen someday, but there's also that other side that says, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. So, you know, when we keep hearing about these military tribunals, uh, you know, these sealed indictments, um, I guess, you know, we will see, and I'm hoping that we will see something, hopefully not our patriots, uh, that are the ones that are going to be assigned to Guantanamo, but, but, but actually these, these, uh, these elite that have been breaking the law uh, and murdering and raping and, and killing and, and what have you. Um, you know, actually, um, get locked up. So, I mean, do you think that we're going to have, uh, some, some major revelations here in the, say, next 30, 60, 90 days? You know, I sure hope so. And I want to clarify something for some people. Um, I supported Trump. Okay. I did. And Brett knows that. I supported Trump and I rode with him till about 60 or 90 days in. And then I really started to, see some things that alarmed me and now i'm completely 
1,000% convinced he is one of them completely. Um, no doubt in my mind, he makes the, the 666 hand signal more than anybody I know, um, and the triangle um, nonstop, and just all of his policies, everything he's doing, it's complete, he's, it's a lot of lip service, but he's, what happened was Obama stripped everything that was hindering um, the, the the final stage for the end game. He stripped it all away, and he betrayed us openly. Well, Trump is doing it, you know, in a in a backstabbery way, right? Um, and he's 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 putting the the exclamation point on every single part of the the new world order plan. He's he's uh you know he's you know, steering this economic collapse and telling people it's a good thing. He has people begging for martial law. And he's supposed to be the defender of the Constitution. I have news for you people. There is no Constitution under martial law. Okay? Right. And let right. me tell you something else. Remember that um, Trump had a meeting a few months back with Vladimir Putin, and he was given over, what, was it 150 or 300 terabytes of information from Russian spies, okay, um, and they were online hackers, and it wasn't on uh, liberals, it was on conservatives and dissenters and people who once supported Trump and now opposed him, guys, all right, and then when you think of what that ICE agent who committed suicide in 2016 uh, from New York you know, he wrote a, his suicide note and what it said. He said, you know, uh, the American government knows that the economy is terminally ill and their plan is when the economy collapses to blame it on a cyber attack from from Russia to start World War Three, and that they're going to shut the power grid down, all right, and, bl and blame it on them and enact martial law. That way they can get a jump on, um, they can get a jump on the population. And as soon as that happens, they're going to take out the ones they deem threats. Political dissenters, uh, domestic terrorists, right? Uh, opposition, anybody like that, right? They're going to jump on them first. And the, the masses will be basically unaware in the beginning, you know, of what's actually uh, taking place and him building the wall. I mean, and then the 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 sham at the U.S. Uh, southern border, right? Which was really just an excuse to deploy, you know, ten thousand troops domestically. And then we find out about Operation Hot Musket, right? What does that sound like? Hot musket. It sounds like a war going hot instead of cold. And musket reminds you of a civil war, right? Uh, revolutionary war and um, then we find out that they're getting orders to be deployed to Lubbock, Texas where they are producing directed energy weapons for crowd control people use your damn brains I mean it's I mean how many things have I stated in this in this podcast alone Brett I mean have I not stated my case yeah, no, you've done a fine job, and, and you, you definitely have uh, a leg to stand on there. Um, again, there there's a lot of information that you know. So I, I have enough. Have I have time. enough evidence there's to so convict, much. Brett. I have enough to convict, brother. And I want Hillary to go down just like y'all. I want to see these snakes go down just like all you guys. But guess what? Those dissenters that would be arrested in that ICE agent's letters. Guess where they were going to be sent to? The federal penitentiaries like Guantanamo Bay. Right. Yeah, you know what? It was, it's it's um, it, going back and looking at the the the, um, the alert that came from the Department of Homeland Security talking mm. about the power grids going down. Yep. You know um, when when that came out, and then I, I can't I can't recall was was the was the letter revisited before or after uh, of. Of the uh, the ice uh, the ice uh, of the ice uh, agent that committed suicide did that resurface after that alert? 
Yes, yeah, people brought it back up because they started seeing all this stuff come to real life. They're like, whoa, what this guy said right. before he blew his brains out in public and had a suicide and, note and, attached, what and, he said is coming to it, life. It, and now it makes so much more sense, you know. Now yes. that we've had that time that's gone by, you can, you know, where you would have looked at it before and thought this is just somebody that's, that's, that's you know, they're, they've snapped and they've, they've gone off the deep end. You can look and read that letter now uh, after seeing that alert and go, oh, wow, this isn't so crazy. This isn't such a far stretch. Absolutely. You know? And guess what? Um, the guy took over a week to write it. He thought this right. out, man. Well, you know, I, I thought that I would be kind of proactive, and I, and, if, if, uh, and I don't recommend this to anybody that's listening, but uh, unless, of course, you just you want some good uh, uh, bedtime reading. <laughs> but uh, I took it upon myself to to actually read the 94-page document that was attached to the article from the Department of Homeland Security, mm. um, hoping to get some kind of information there um, or some kind of insight as to what um, what that entailed. Yeah. And I got to tell you, it, it's a lot of nothing, uh, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> it's a lot of legal jargon that you know refers to um, you know federal versus state and and how it'll all be handled, but um, I felt like after reading the 94 pages, I, I was just being run in circles mm. um, that didn't give you any clear, um, you know, indication as to what they would do in a situation like that, um, uh, because again, they're trying to speculate on what what we would need to deal with in a scenario that we've never experienced, or for that matter, have a very hard time even imagining what yeah. that would be like or how that would look. Yes. So I, I did read all 94 pages, and i got to tell you, um, I, I walked away uh, knowing probably uh, as, as much as I did before uh, reading it. Wow. Well, and you know what? There's been um, quite a few articles warning about cyber attack. They just came out with the NIAC catastrophic power outage study. Um let me see. I've got these things, actually. I've got them downloaded, and, um, you know, I could actually pull them up and read them if I, if I wanted to. I'm not going to, you know, kill you guys with the what's details. Your what's, what's your take, John, on, on what happened in New York and then also in Louisiana, uh, like 24 hours before, uh, with the, the Transformers and the blue light and all that? What, 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 what's your thoughts and feelings on that? My thoughts and feelings on that? Okay, well... Let me just state this, and I, I think we I think I think we should move to this because we really we really crushed um, the Trump QAnon right. We I mean people have the they have the information you know, and Brett is still kind of he's still kind of pro Trump. He's holding out some hope. Um, you know, I don't know how on board you are with QAnon, but I think you 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 want you want Trump to be a good guy. We all do, man, but. I, you know, I, I, that's, and again, I'm not, I, I have yet to make a, make a decision. Uh, just like you, I voted for him and I supported him. Um, but, but I also uh, lost some steam along the way. You know, just like you were the things that I saw that maybe kind of, um, you know, made me question. Um, again, there's still part of me that wants to believe, that wants to hope that maybe this guy is something more, um, and, and that, you know, he really is looking out uh, for America. That being said, I am not so naive and gullible to believe that, that you know, he is he is going to, to be the one. I, I think we all like to believe and have some hope that, you know, things can turn around and things will be better. But I'm also very, um, I'm very cautious mm -hmm. uh, in putting all my eggs in one basket. So... Uh, not not to sound uh, wishy washy or, or on the fence, but that's really kind of where I'm at right now. I am kind of on the fence as to how this is all going to play out, and I, I believe uh, for myself, mm -hmm. uh, I'll be able to make a much better uh, decision as to where uh, I feel uh, in the next, I uh, say, next sixty ninety days. Well, you know what, Brett? There's nothing wrong with being undecided, bro. There's nothing wrong with holding out hope. But these people, that's why they call it the QAnon cult, because it's, it's dangerous the way they're thinking, right? The, right, right. It, you're putting, it, it's no longer trusting the plan. You're putting faith in the plan, right? You, you, you're worshiping this. 
Right? You have more faith in QAnon than you do in God. And you're yeah, calling QAnon, I have not got behind it, nor do I think I ever will. And I can tell you this, John, and uh, not to cut you off. No, go ahead. But if they impose, if they impose martial law where I live, I will not be one of those individuals uh, turning over my guns willingly. I yeah. can tell you that. Yeah, no, man, no. And what blows me away is that these people are literally calling for it like it's a good thing. And they're talking about defending the Constitution as they're calling for something that completely <laughs> um, makes right. the Constitution null and void. And it's like, do you you sound like the, the liberal uh, retards now, right? Right. <laughs> you sound right. like them because yeah. you're, you're making... You know. You're, it's like calling uh, people fascists and Nazis as you're suppressing their freedom of speech and all that, right? Same thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that that's something that, that I, I don't know that I could ever uh, really come to terms with. I mean, I, I think uh, anybody that, that's researched Katrina uh, and what happened there uh, during that time and, and uh, you know, the, 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 the crimes that were committed and, and you know... The, the, the martial law that ensued. Now, that was some scary stuff, man. And I would not want to be a part of that. Um, and I, I, back then, and I sure know I wouldn't want to be a part of that today. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, bro. So, you know, let me, you know, you know, I, I, I do want to, I want to cap off the, the QAnon Trump with this, okay? And I want to say that, you know, um, I, I I feel like maybe I should save the the Bible scripture for the end. That's what I'll do. I'll save the scripture for the end. We'll move on to the to the next topic. Okay, now uh, Astoria, Queens, right, New York City. We had these electric blue lights, Brett. Crazy as hell, bro. I mean, crazy. Um, let me just say right. this: um, over the Arctic, you know, um, there was. Uh, electric blue lights seen over there over like a 10 day span. This has been a recent, you know, a new phenomenon, which they say is connected to the eruption of Krakatoa, which recently erupted along with Mount Etna, recent eruption. Um, and then we have also seen, uh, seismic activity, 50 foot waves, uh, you know, on Russian peninsula. Um, as well as earthquakes in Russia, and I believe it was Indonesia uh, also. Um, and let's let's also say that when this took place, uh, there was internet outages uh, sporadically nationwide. There was electrical power outages sporadically nationwide, and. There was 911 messages and alerts being sent to cell phones and TVs, and 911 was down sporadically nationwide as well when this happened. Okay, that that was that was a huge that was a huge wake up uh, call for me. Uh, the morning that uh, the morning uh, after that happened, John, um, and again, you and I haven't spoken a few days, and, and uh, as soon as I saw that. Um, it, things got real for me, mm. um, you know, and that, you know, and, and having uh, been speaking with my wife and having been doing uh, some, some prepping, um, you know, man, I geared it up um, <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Uh, brother, I, you know, I was getting my house in order and my wife was, you know, with me 100%. She, I could tell she, uh, for the very first time, was like, wow, you know, this Everything that, that, you know, I've been telling her um, had validity and that, you know, there, there could really be something to this. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to hear rumors of, you know, this stuff going on. Uh, it's another, though, to, to actually see mm -hmm. we've got some really strange things going on. We've got, you know, uh, these blue strobing lights and an orb, uh, as you found out the, the, the day later. Uh, there in New York, and and also found out what's going on in Louisiana with all these these yes, outages. Thank and you. Especially yes, with the so, yes, thank like, you. There was things, uh, transformer explosions in Louisiana. Thank you, Brett. I forgot to say that. Yes, I mean red flags, red flags. I mean going up left and right, man. Um, and uh, it, it it got me on 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 the edge. You know, I never was scared, 
but again, it, it really kind of was like a cattle prod, you know, to get my ass off the couch and, and not relax so much and, again, be focused on uh, taking care of uh, what I, I consider to be the most important thing in my life, which is, is my family. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Pre- preparing preparing, and, and, and hoping that all the preparation and stuff w- will be for not, you know? Uh, like I told my wife, I said, you, this is just an insurance policy, uh, just like anything else that you'd have, uh, whether it be, uh, you know, for your auto or for your home or what have you. Damn you know, straight. We, we've got it, hoping we're never going to need it, but if we, we need it, we've got it. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. And you know what? I was a big prepper. Um you know, there for a while, and I got away from it because I become so spiritual that I truly believe right. that, you know, God's going to walk me right through this, you know, I, I, he, you know, what woke me up, and this is so insane, um, you know, was a dream of a giant red planet in our sky with fireballs falling, the entire earth shaking, and the the most reassuring message was given to me when this happened. For one, um, in the dream, I wasn't running, and everyone else was. <laughs> and for two, in the dream, I was woken up with audible words. Um, three words. Trust God, John. And I just, you know, I've had this firm belief ever since that, you know, um, that that was probably the end. And... Maybe where I die at, who knows? But um, even so, that I'm gonna I'm gonna get to where I'm supposed to be regardless, right? Exactly. I'm, I'm exactly. gonna reach my destination, and God's gonna make sure of it. You know, as long as I do my part, and you know that's set a fire under me, Brett, and that's that's why this channel exists. You know, because that dream five years ago, you know, and it's pushed all this, man. So and I and it's I that you, that you say that John because you know there's there's uh, uh, not to keep bringing him up again but uh, Jacob Israel uh, on one of his most recent videos he claims that he had a very similar dream. You're talking about his Planet um, X video, right? Y- yes, and and that that is when his channel took off because he was it, it was like he was being told you know and again. Um, if, if, if the divine is somehow speaking to you or him or me and it's, and we're being told, Hey, we're, you know, we're not just being tapped on the shoulder. We're being slapped in the face. Like, Hey, <laughs> this is something that you need to be talk, talking about. This yeah. is something that, that I want your attention, yeah. 100% of your attention on. And so, you know, it's interesting that not only you, but we have others that are in this community that have been kind of shook and awake, if you will, yep. uh, by similar similar dreams. And, and I don't believe in coincidence. Coincidence is, like I've said in the past, I don't think you do either. No way. No way. And you know what? You don't have no problem with saying Jacob Israel on my channel. I love Jacob Israel. Um, I love his content. I love his work. I love his message. I think he's a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty nice guy. Yes. And, um, you know, let, let me just say this, man, that what's been crazy is... You know, recently I've been really uh, talking a lot about, you know, the nemesis system. And, okay, let me just state this, that the, these these blue lights and, you know, what appears, to, you know, something is causing these transformers and these substations to explode and to react, right? And it's clearly electrical. Um, also, something is causing you know, internet and power and 911 services to go out. And that's clearly electrical, right? That's interference of some type. Um, and if you think about the universe, okay, we're told that it's matter and gravity. Well, bullshit, okay? It's, it's, it's an electric universe. And that, that explains everything. There is no holes in electric universe. Um, you know, when there's holes in the other and things that can't be accounted for. All right. Right. So, um, if we are in an electric universe and everything is electromagnetic and plasmatic, you know, that's how it works. And our core, you know, um, instead of being this molten core, it could still kind of be a molten core, but 
it would be a great big ball of electromagnetic energy and that would actually essentially be what's creating the field around the earth right um right and if you go ahead it affects everything it affects your mind it affects your heart yes you know i mean it it, to to the two basic you know organs of our bodies are the most affected right well the the core would, would be the core would be the earth's heart that's what it would be equivalent to our heart has a giant electromagnetic field um you know uh, that protects our bodies and even our heart even has brain cells and has a direct connection to our brain so check this out um the earth is alive and conscious and there's a direct connection between the earth's magnetism and human consciousness right and i speak about this a lot that every time there's been a pole shift in history they happen about every thirteen thousand years that there is a shift in human consciousness as well because we're connected we're we came from the earth the dust of the earth right um and we couldn't be living conscious beings if the earth wasn't a living conscious being i believe all planets are living conscious beings and the stars in the sky as well they're the heavenly host right they're they're angels right um you know i think everything's more than what we've been told it is is what i'm saying and let's just say this that there's this destroyer right this neutron star this giant dark black hole like infrared star that's absorbing light and putting off an enormous amount of you know uh, negatively charged electromagnetic energy right a field of it right um and it's actually making its way around the sun now and getting ready to uh accelerate really fast past the earth okay let's just hypothetically say that's happening all right well as it comes this way you know you'd be able to tell it was really getting getting close because it would be able to start getting a pool on us we would see things like what's happened and you know uranus and neptune and jupiter and you know how they're having pole shifts and they're 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 tilting and they're all this stuff right um and volcanoes it's on mars you know we'd be able to tell as it got closer and closer to us because the outer planets would be affected first right um, and what would happen is we would start to tilt towards wherever this thing was coming from and our planet would perturbate and things like the sun stood of east and west. We'd see it go west and southwest, kind of like we have, right? Um, we'd see a weakening, uh, a weakening in our electromagnetic field, kind of like we have. We would also see probably effects to our, our sun, which we just so happen to be in a solar minimum. And I've seen like, a handful of sunspots in the last two years, right? And our sun could even be dying, right? It looks like it's losing its coronas, you know, and that's a scary thing, but it's probably happening. And that's, here's the thing. If our sun is also, um, affecting our, our electromagnetic field that protects the planet, as it weakens, our field weakens and it puts out, you know, the, the radiation. Um, in space, it travels, it's easier to get through our atmosphere, and once it gets in here, it kind of gets stuck, right, and creates like a methane film at the top of our atmosphere, which allows it to be trapped, and radiation comes to the surface, okay, um, so this thing would react with the core of the earth as it's coming, it's like two magnets pulling together, that's why the earth would tilt forward, okay, and as this happened, that would be a literal electrical reaction right a reaction of electricity and what you would see is as that pulled you would see that charge um and radiate and things like the poles would start melting from geothermal radiation kind of like they are um you would see uh that electricity um start to affect the mantle and the magma within the earth um you know, basically kind of like, you know, boiling it up to the top type thing, you know, changing, moving things. Earthquakes and volcanoes. You and, would see uh, volcanoes erupt, yes. And as they erupted, the ash and pyroclastic flow would also um, add 
to that, that film, that methane film in our atmosphere, trapping in cold, blocking out sunlight, um, you know, making the things get worse. Um, but you, as that magma started to move and push, well, guess what? Plates in uh, would move and push, and you would see seismic activity and earthquakes kind of ha- like we have. And that would discharge at the top. The Earth's crust just kind of floats on the top there. So uh, when that energy escaped at the top, you would see things like giant sinkholes. You would see things like giant cracks, right? Kind of like we have. Um, and then when that escaped, it would enter into the air and into the atmosphere. Well, here's the thing. Um, once it gets in there, it'd be charged air, you know, electrical storms and tremendous hurricanes and tornadoes and kind of things like, like we have seen, right? Um, and with that, that methane film, on top of them um, spraying the air with barium, aluminum, and strontium, and nanoparticulates, which is ionizing the atmosphere, which is meant to block that radiation from space, right? And it's also meant to uh, reflect, reflect and refract light from the objects that are incoming away from the planet, right? As part of their deception as well. There's a lot of, a lot of purposes for that chemtrailing. Um, and they even use it to test and see, uh, with bio, uh, engineered weapons, how, how they could, you know, lay them across the population also. Um, so it's, it's a lot of purposes, but that would add to that methane film. And it's like a film of glass, bro. That's on the top of the atmosphere. And it's not allowing the energy that's stored up. That's reacting inside our core. That's making its way all the way up to the earth. It's not allowing it to escape, and it's getting stuck, and it's creating this charge. Strike a match. Yeah, exactly, bro. And you think about in the Bible when it talks about um, the firmament will burn up with fervent heat and things like that. What I wonder. You know, if we don't do it to ourselves with the chemtrailing, and if that's not why we don't just create this big fire hazard atmosphere and we think of the directed energy weapons how was they able to ignite those things and do that to all those houses with their smart meters and all that in um paradise california you know how was that able to happen because the air was charged it was just right you know um and they were able to direct that energy and you you have to think the sun simulator using lasers and mirrors and the technologies most people have seen the patents that's a giant directed energy weapon in the sky you know as well oh, yeah. so you know when i was speaking about all these things yesterday you know and it's even talking about how the plates uh you can see charts of their movement and some of them are completely turning in 90 degree and 45 degree angles man um you know and we're seeing that you know this pole shift happens every time nibiru comes as well and these changes come as well uh and the climate changes right we go from warm to cold climate on earth and you know we're leaving the warm phase and going to the cold and when this cold phase comes guess what volcanoes erupt it probably is a big reason for the the cold phase because as these volcanoes erupt guess what that pyroclastic flow the gases all that stuff creates that effect i'm talking about in the atmosphere blocking out the sun right and making it cold on earth you know uh so basically turning us into a big methane snowball um and you know we're seeing all these things so you know what i was saying yesterday that you know what would probably make you know, a ground explosion like that, right? And a charge like that would be a celestial body, you know, above that area, possibly because it would also have electromagnetic properties too. It's alive too. And it's orbiting that star, that system, right? And if it was, say, the Blue Kachina, it's a star, right? It's a small star, but it's a star, you know? And um, lo and behold, you know, today I wake up and we've got a blue um, orb of a pretty good size. Um, and what appears to be like a surface feature or a hole, you know, maybe this thing is artificial. I'm, I'm wondering if a lot of these, this, this system, this nemesis system, if it isn't artificial, you know, because the weird holes and things that we're seeing. And what are they called that they're seeing all around the sun? They've recently been captured again around the sun, where it appears that they're just sucking the the hydrogen or the plasma um, 
out of the sun. The sun is a giant uh, electrical, you know, fusion explosion going on in space as well, man. And, you know, we are locked um, in what I believe is plasmatic grid lines around the sun. And people think that we just orbit the sun in this flat kind of, you know, disc like a record. When it's really we travel behind the sun in this corkscrew spin because it's like a comet, you know, barreling through interstellar space. I mean, people just, they, if they understood what, what things really were, um, they could see how much sense all of this makes, Brett, is what I'm trying to say. And right. once again, I think that with, just like with the QAnon stuff, right, I think that with Nemesis, I have proven... Um, not just enough to for an indictment in, in a case. I think I've proven enough evidence to convict, right? I should get a conviction yeah. here, right? Um, right. And this is, this is my style. You know this. This is how I do things. I go on a massive manhunt, and I connect a million dots, and I want it to make complete sense and be airtight. And, dude, Nemesis explains... Yeah. It explains everything, Brett, on the earth. It explains it all. And what is more likely that there is, you know, 10 million separate, super complicated explanations for all these events and anomalies taking place, or one big major event that's causing all of these anomalies that makes perfect sense? Right. No, I mean, uh, exactly. And I think uh, usually the the easiest uh, conclusion is usually the best. Well, and then you think about the, the oceans receding. Um, oh, yeah. If, if, the, if the moon is causing the oceans to recede and, you know, all that, right, from its tidal, right, its tidal lock. Well, what about a giant-ass body passing? You don't think that would pull the oceans way back? You know? Right, yeah, and with, and with, with, the, with the moons in the, in, the, in the past, I mean, you know, caused them to ebb and flow, but we've seen proof uh, for quite some time now these, these oceans are receding, and they're not coming back. That's no, but what happens when they all come back at once, Brett? Is that what happened in exactly. the Great Flood? Right, yeah, you're talking about massive tsunamis like the world has never seen. Absolutely, absolutely. And let's think about the moon and the sun for a second. All right, if nothing's going on in space and everything's cool, right? Everything's fine. There's nothing out there. No dragon. No, no, no wormwood, right? None of that. It's just a conspiracy. Then why in the hell do they need all these patents for sun simulators why are all these articles you know where germany china russia the united states are all mitten they're using a sun simulator they're now saying with the sun simulator that they're in chemtrails that they're going to dim the sun you know to to reduce right. global warming um they're all admitting to using moon simulators as well why do they need to fake the sun and moon if nothing's going on yeah, you know, it, uh, with the whole sun simulator, um, I thought it was, uh, I was, I was just kind of shocked when they, they finally came out, you know, because we've been screaming about uh, this and chemtrails for quite some time, and it seems like, I don't know, why, why now do they admit to it when it was, you know, uh, no, you, you know, it's a conspiracy. Uh, there is no such thing as chemtrails or a sun simulator. And then I don't know if it, they just got to a tipping point. They decided, you know what, we're going to just gonna go ahead. And we're going to say that we are doing this, um, and, and this is why we're doing it. Um, it was almost like, you know, again, I was so surprised that they even disclosed that. Well, you I want mean, to know for something? For those of us out there that have eyes to see and ears to hear, I think we figured it out, right? Well, they've but been disclosing it though, Brett. They disclose it every time that they roll out a new phase. Once they come out with a new phase, like. The, the, they say, hey, yeah, there's a sun simulator when they came out with the moon simulator. They say, yeah, we're chemtrailing when they decided to dim the sun. Like, so when they're upping the phase and it's getting more severe, more artificial, then they tell you about the last thing that they did and acting like they're doing that right. now, right? They're like, oh, we're about to start this, right? When really they've been doing it for yeah. years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, I think I even saw something uh, back where 
uh, they said that you know, the chemtrails had been going on since the nineties. Um, you know, and, <laughs> wow. and and which oh yeah, I just I just it was just a documentary that I saw and they they, uh, they they claimed that they'd been doing it since the nineties, which really made me think, um, was I just not was I asleep to this? Was I just not looking yeah. at the skies until into the last few years? Was I part of the sleeping masses of today that yeah. still don't see it? Well, that's the thing. That's the thing, uh, Brett. And, and not aware. Well, look, in the 1960s or whatever, John F. Kennedy in a speech talked about the world governments coming together and controlling the weather. In the 60s, bro. That's when oh. these patents for the sun simulator came out. And I'm under the same thing as you are. It's like, did we not know that they've been controlling the weather, faking, right. the, faking the sun and moon, the stars, all along? Well, and, and that's not something interesting, too. I mean, well, back to that, I don't know if you knew this or not, but Walt Disney, um, Von Braun, uh, one of the scientists uh, from Paperclip, one of the Nazi scientists that we uh, gave refuge to mm -hmm. at the end of World War II, um, who became essentially head of NASA, um, had even done a, uh, a small show documentary, if you will, uh, on Walt Disney's um, a channel yeah. talking about um, you know a weather control and how we were going to use it for the for the good, right? <laughs> and so this is something that was done decades ago um, that you can look up and find where they actually talk about manipulating the weather even back then. Yeah, but man. it was not something that most people knew about, right? It wasn't anything that it, you know. Uh, I don't remember that as a kid, um, but apparently that was something that was disclosed. Yeah, man. Yeah, no. And I want to shout out uh, Apocalypse, Apocalypse, uh, uh, in the in the live chat room as well. Um, Shirley Graham and Apocalypse, and uh, me and Brett are in there. So we got we got a few people in there tonight. But yeah, man. How long has this stuff been going on, Brett? You know, dude. And here's the thing. You know, uh, there's going to be a lot of people that hear this episode, and they're going to be like, "These two guys are lunatics." <laughs> They're lunatics. <laughs> Think about the stuff we we've, we've talked about. I mean, but Brett, man, it's oh. it's real and it's true, and they've been telling us all along. They've been telling us, putting it right in their face. Did, did you hear anything about uh, when they were talking about the blue lights uh, in New York? Um, I heard something again uh, in passing. Didn't get a lot of information on it, but uh, the, the blue light had something to do with one of Tesla's inventions, mm. and they link Tesla's inventions and stuff like. Uh, was it Donald Trump's grandfather that dealt with Tesla and actually knew some of the projects that he was working on? Have you yes. heard about that? Yes, I have heard that. Yes, I have. That he actually um, took or helped clean up his death or something like that or somehow was involved around Tesla and around the time he died. And, um, you know, his, his research was taken, you know. Right. <laughs> it was sure. taken. Yeah. So, I mean, and you look at Trump, and, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, look, guys, people don't understand that Trump is on these Illuminati cards. There was stories written about Baron Trump and Castle Trump in the 1800s about, I mean, and uh, a war between the socialist and anarchist. I mean, dude, this stuff is insane. Children's books about him. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Uh, they've always known that he was going to be president. And I think, and I think he could be. You know, he's the end times president. You know, in my opinion. So, <laughs> um, right, right. You know, I just. Oh, well, I'm sorry, dude. I, I I got you off track, and, and and we were talking about you know we we're talking about what was going on in New York, and uh, you know the orbs and uh, the blue lights and and weather events and all that. And, and uh, I may have thrown you off track. Where no, else, where I, else you know, actually, you that? yeah, let's kind of shift gears into um, the kind of the final phase of tonight, and we're going to talk about you know um, some end times events, um, you know, kind of World War Three, and we'll, we'll get we'll get a little bit of scripture mixed in here. Um, now, let me just say that the the Economist magazine. Right, we know back in 1981, uh, they predicted economic collapse in 2018, the rise of the phoenix, right, the one world currency. Um, we know that 
Trump and QAnon and all that trust the plan that they're they're taking down the Federal Reserve and that they're gonna they're gonna crash the economy easy and give it a soft landing and well what com- what's gonna come out of that is gonna be a new currency right a one world currency the 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 mark of the beast most likely um, and you know with these these tariffs and all these things going on um, trade wars. We've seen mostly Americans suffer. American farmers can't sell their soybeans to China now. I mean, there's been a lot of Americans hurt by this that was supposed to help us, right? And we've seen uh, the United States and China bump heads over the, the South China Sea. We've seen Iran state that they'll, they'll shoot the United States planes down. We've seen Turkey get in the mix in Syria as the United States says they're pulling out of Syria. Um, we've seen, uh, Russia in the U.S., uh, butting heads, and Russia literally, um, put nuclear bombers in Venezuela that used to be an ally that Trump kind of ruined. Um, we've also seen Russia tell Great Britain that they'd shoot them out of the sky if they went over the Kerchin Strait. We've seen Russia, uh, uh, in Crimea, um, basically commandeer what three three ships uh, taking over Ukraine essentially. Um, I mean, you name it, dude. It's it's all been happening. And then I believe Revelation sixteen twelve in the Bible is the start of World War Three, and it says basically that from the dust of the river Euphrates prepares the way for the kings of the east. And the, the rivers Euphrates, um, uh, is Syria. Okay. That's, that's where the location is. And it says from the dust, right? So from, from, from the fight that takes place there, when the, when the dust clears, right? From the, from the war that takes place there will prepare the way for the kings of the east. The kings of the east, the literal translation, it's plural, means Russia and China. And it's saying that it's preparing their way to conquer the West. And now we see the U.S. pulling out of Syria. All right. I want to read a quick headline, um, you know, on some news that's taking place because this is this is very relevant, guys. And, you know, all these things right now, uh, you know, the electrical arc turns the night sky blue in NYC. We, we've discussed that. Um but, you know, we've discussed QAnon, uh, you know, Trump, all these things are, they're end times events, man. They're, it's big, all right? And this is out of the Daily Express, Britain's World War Three threat, Russia, China, and North and South Poles are UK's dangers in 2019. And now we're hearing the Poles being involved, the North and South Poles, right? Um, so I'll just read a little paragraph or so out of this. It says, Britain and its allies, which we're an ally, have faced a turbulent year in 2018 when the fight against the Islamic State in Syria, fears of spying from China, and state-sponsored murder by Russia. But if you thought 2019 was just going to be about Brexit and dancing on ice, think again. In military terms, the threats we face range from Russia successfully testing a hypersonic nuclear missile to confrontation against China. And this hypersonic nuclear missile, they say, can get past all of the United States defense, missile defense and that um, it moves and operates like a comet. That's a weird coincidence, just saying. It says, um, we will also have to consider uh, tackling Islamic State and its affiliates in Syria, Nigeria, and at home. In cyber terms, these players represent a clear and present danger that could trigger a NATO crisis or deliberate attacks on our national infrastructure. And there's more of that that narrative, right? The cyber attacks on our infrastructure, on the power grid, right? This has been said. This is what it's going to be uh, for the false flag to start World War III. And that each of them seek to undermine the global order uh, is not news, but... In a mark of the extraordinary times we live in, they are being encouraged in part by the United States. And as long as President Trump continues to pursue the, his America First doctrine, the U.S. administration mirrors 
They are disrespect to international institutions. Now, let me tell you something. This right here is alarming, guys. And this is where we're about to, to jump into some scripture, too. Okay? You're hearing that they're basically saying, Great Britain is saying, Trump's messing stuff up for them as well. We've seen Germany, right, basically jump ship on on the United States, right? Um, this is this has all been, you know, kind of kind of taking place, guys. And we need to we need to pay attention, man, because um, this stuff's real and it's happening. And in the Bible, it states uh, basically who's going to destroy the United States. And let me pull this up real quick. And I believe it says it's the head of a leopard. Um, the, the feet of a bear. Um, all right. I remember seeing this years ago and I thought it never happened. Okay. And it says, and this is, you know, after the dragon of Revelations 12 it says, here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding compute the number of the beast for is the number of a man. And its number is 666. Okay. Uh, United States, America, six letters in each 666 okay now and i saw and behold the lamb standing on mount zion and with him were 144,000 oh shoot i think i lost my spot hold on oh here we go yeah i went a little down too far there okay here we go sorry about that and i i stood on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on its heads names of blasphemy. Right? And we know that, you know, this represents the, the Nebiru system, but the ten horns are the, the tig, ten big uh, monoliths, um, the, the phallic big towers like the Washington Monument uh, around the world. Right? Now, and the beast which I saw was like a leopard. A uh, leopard is a representation of Germany. And its feet were like the feet of a bear. A bear is a representation of Russia. And its mouth was of a lion's mouth. And the lion is a representation of Great Britain. And the dragon gave power to it. The dragon could also be China, but it's most likely likely Satan, okay, and its throne and great authority. Now, so you can see where there is an alliance um, and the, the dragon, you know, Satan, uh, you know, maybe China is giving power to this or maybe it's Trump, you know, causing this to happen by all the riffraff he's starting. But this looks like an alliance between Germany, Russia and and uh, Great Britain. And yes, guys, this also means other things as well. I've already explained that the word scripture is, it's literal, it's linear, it's metaphorical, it's allegorical, it's um, anagrams, it's <laughs> metaphysical, it's, it's everything all at once, all right? It's happening all at once. It's past, present, and future, right? So um, yes, it has multiple meanings. And here we go. It says, and I saw one of its heads as having been slain to death, and its deadly wound was healed. And all the earth wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with it? And a mouth speaking great things said, and let me just say, that, you know, uh, the beast of the earth uh, and the beast of the sea. You know, I had a dream years ago, which was strange, of Obama and the Pope. Uh, it was actually right before the Pope came to America. It was so weird. I had a dream of the Obama, Obama and the Pope uh, meeting, shaking hands, and I heard in my head, and the beast of the earth and the beast of the sea shall come together. And I heard the word birthing pangs. And then... Lo and behold, I turned on the TV and the Pope was coming to America. So the beast of the earth is most likely the United States of America also. So, and it had a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies was given to it. And authority was given to it to act 42 months 
All right, now listen. Here's the thing. I told you the Illuminati has the card Enough is Enough, which is the thumbnail for this episode, um, right? Saying that they'll try to assassinate Trump, the Simpsons, showing him in a casket, right? And they worship the dragon, right? And let me just say that, you know, uh, he could not, he could be, you know, the dragon could be China, right? And giving the power to. To, to Trump, there's a lot of things going back door with China, but who gave authority to the beast, right? And they worship the beast. And think about how these people are acting over Trump and QAnon and stuff like that, right? And and just over America too. The America is also the beast. And it says, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with it? What is what does America look like, right? The most powerful military in the world. And it says, and a mouse speaking great things. And it says in other translations, proud things, right? And blasphemies was given to it. And authority was given to it to act. 42 months. Think of a presidential term. That's three and a half years, guys, right? And it opened its mouth in blasphemy toward Yahweh or God to blaspheme his name and his dwelling place in those dwelling in heaven. And it was given to it to war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given to it over every tribe and kindred and tongue and nation. And all those dwelling in the earth will worship him. Those of whom the names had not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, having been slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone goeth into captivity, into captivity he goes. If anyone will kill by a sword, by a sword he must be killed. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. Okay, now this is, and okay, this is America, you know, the beast of the sea, the, the beast of the earth, right? Speaking proud things, giving power to overcome the saints. A mortal wound to the head. Now tell me this. Don't describe me even more. Now listen. It says, And I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And it had two horns like a lamb, but spoke like a dragon. And it executes. Think about that. So it looks like a lamb. It acts like it's, you know, a lamb of God. Like it follows God. Like it's good, right? But it speaks just like one of the evil ones. Like one of the dragons. Okay, that, that it's a very, very good description of, of Trump here. I'm just saying he fits this. Um, and uh, it executes all the authority of the first beast before it. And it causes the earth and those dwelling in it that should worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he performed great signs, even so as to make fire come down from heaven upon the earth before men. And he deceives those dwelling on the earth because of the signs which were given to it to do before the beast, saying to those dwelling on the earth to make an image to the beast who has the wound of the sword and lived and was given to it to put life into the image of the beast. And this beast could be AI too, right? An image to put life into it so that the image of the beast might even speak. And cause as many as would not worship the image to be killed. Alright, so, you know, I just mentioned these war headlines, right? We know that 2019, The Economist magazine comes out with one cover is pitch black. You know, probably representing a blackout. Another has the four horsemen of the apocalypse. We know that the first horse is white, representing famine and sickness and hunger. The second is red, representing, you know, bloodshed and, um, you know, civil unrest and war. The, the third one comes out with scales, you know, representing justice and balance and things like that. And the fourth one is death and hell, right? And it brings war and famine and all those things at once, you know, and this was on the economist's a uh, magazine cover, and then you hear these descriptions of these countries that appear to be turning on us. Um, the beast taking a, a mortal wound to the head, looking like a lamb, but speaking like a dragon. What are your thoughts, Brett, on, on all this? I know I just delivered a lot at once, but we can kind of go through this quickly. 
well. I mean, obviously, I think there's a, a lot of symbolism uh, going on, and uh, it's, it's kind of easy, you know, if, if you are following events, to make some some, uh, some, some correlations here um, and kind of piece it together. But I, I think you're doing an amazing job of, of, of bringing uh, real-world events and scriptures together uh, you know, the climate today. And so, yeah, I, I think that there's there's a, a lot of uh, information pointing to exactly what you're saying, that this this very well could be uh, in days, and, and we are we are actually living in those times. Yeah, yep. And if you think of what happened September 23rd, 2017, many people believe... It was a sign from Revelations 12, the woman and the dragon, right? Virgo uh, aligned with Leo, Mercury, Venus, and Mars with the sun over her shoulders, the moon under her feet, and Jupiter between her legs. And this was the arrival of Nebiru, Nemesis, the dragon. And, you know, this was, you know, uh, you know, Trump was inaugurated in January of, uh, of uh, you know, so... And we've seen a lot of things. I'm just saying, man. You know, I, I believe that we we have we've moved from birthing pains into tribulation, right? Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that uh, you know, it's September 23rd, uh, 2017, was in fact uh, the great sign in heaven. Um, we're officially one year past that and uh, I think based on uh, the events that are to follow mm -hmm. um, we're in store for some really uh, crazy days ahead of us uh, you know uh, sometime what in March mm -hmm. uh, of, of 2021 yeah um, you know we we very well be, be dealing with uh, uh, Satan uh, yeah who was cast, cast down to down to earth, yeah. um, and so that that is a, a very uh, uh, hard and exciting to believe at the same time. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, and you know, and I'm not trying to tell people that this is what it is for a fact. But I am trying to say, you know, you, you can't tell me that I don't bring up a good point here with some of these scriptures and what's actually going on and the, the signs we've seen. And, you know, I think tonight uh, in particular, this show, Brett, we've kicked some ass on proving some points and building some cases for a lot of things. You know, um, you know, the QAnon Trump, you know, PSYOP controlled opposition i think there's a lot pointing to that and it being very nefarious you know um it's still it's still open but i mean i think there's a lot pointing to that um then we look at the the skies um the electric blue skies in new york and uh the connections to what's going on with you know uh the, the dragon that could be approaching and all these crazy things on Earth. I think we connected a lot of dots there. And then... All the, all the signs that are supposed to be seen in the, in, in the skies and the suns and, and in the sun and the heaven and the, and the moons. All these things are coming to pass. Yeah. Uh, these are all signs. Now, are they the signs that are referred to in Revelations? Mm -hmm. That we don't know for, 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 for sure. But I can tell you this. There's definitely signs. And all you have to do is open your eyes and take a look around, and you can see them for yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, are these the signs that are spoke about in Revelation? That remains to be seen. But uh, I think that it's pretty easy to say that we have never experienced some of the uh, events that have been going on in just the last uh, year, year and a half. No, man, dude, and that's what I'm saying. Look, it says we'll see sign in the suns, and the moon, and the stars. The perplexing the nations, right? So look, we've seen signs in the sun, 
right? Sun simulator. We've seen the sun flickering. We've seen the sun go out at, for moments. Um, we've uh, seen it be eclipsed in August of 2017 from noonday till 4 p.m., which is also a prophecy um, of the sign, right? Which was a great sign before the great sign. Um, then in the moon, we've seen, what, five blood moons? And now this year, there's, what, four blood moons, um, which is yeah. also... With our first is coming up here is in is it January or February? Uh, I think January. Yeah, we've got one, we've got one coming up, and I think we even have a, a second one that's coming up even in in February as well. So January and February, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, January and February. Yeah, yeah. you know, again, I think. Uh, these blood moons and stuff are more common than most people think, but they're not that common. Dude, they're not like like what we've been seeing. Clustered clustered together, uh, you know, like they are. And I'll tell you this, man, just just today when I was out driving around, I looked up at the sky and I saw what I thought was the moon. And, uh, but it it did not look quite like the moon and and the the waxing uh, and the waning, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, It was diagonal. Wow. Uh, you can only see the upper left half of the moon as I was driving down the road, um, and it, it it looked completely off axis, or maybe we're off axis. We're being tilted. Probably. The moon maybe looks like it's supposed to, but we're being pulled. I, you can't tell me that seeing anything like that is what it used to be. So mm-hmm. we're, we're, I'm seeing things that I've never seen before. Me too. Uh, as as anybody else that that is is paying attention. And it really does make you question everything that's going on right now. Because when I pointed that out to my wife, I said, please tell me that you think that's the moon. And she goes, what else could it be? <laughs> I said, well, that's the only thing I think it could be. I said, but does it look normal to you? And she said, absolutely not, which really makes me question uh, yeah. what's going on today, what's been going on for these last few months and, and last year. Yeah. Um, and we are, are most likely to get continue to see these events unfold and become even more bizarre. Yep. Yep. And think about this, all the near earth objects and the comets and, you know, um, <laughs> Uh, December 30th is supposed to be the king tide according to the Dave Dobbs model and then out to about January 20th I think to the 21st um, expecting big things and that he actually expects the, the big time passing of Nibiru to happen in June of 2019 like the event of all events and that major catastrophic events could begin um, around the 20th of January. When, when is when is the uh, uh, the other uh, solar eclipse that when you when you track what happened in, in seventeen and the, the other one that's coming up that cross that makes a big cross across uh, the United States? When is that second uh, solar eclipse supposed to take place? I believe June of twenty nineteen. <laughs> so I, I think that's I think that's exactly the time that you're talking about. But you know, like X marks for marks the spot yep. and you know I was I was right uh, in the middle of it because I was here right in the middle of Missouri when that eclipse happened uh, on the 23rd of September and let me tell you what it was not a short uh, eclipse as most are it was not a few minutes it was a few hours and it was it was uh, um, pretty amazing to witness firsthand. absolutely Brett man I mean we live in that remote age, dude, you know, um, and we know that in this remote period, there'll be a pole shift. It says the sky will roll back like a scroll. Islands and mountains will be moved from their place. We're going to see meteors fall to the earth like hail, right? It says that comets will rain like hail, 70 pound comets like hail. It says the surface of the earth will be be kissed with fire. It says that they will be a giant rock, stone tossed into the ocean as Babylon falls. It says that a star will we'll land in the ocean and kill a third of mankind, a third of the water, you know, it's, dude, and, and not to mention, you know, World War Three. not to mention, um, the Alliance of Beast, right, which could probably be some type of alien, demon, fallen angel alliance that, you know, mankind fights against, and then in the end, mankind allies up with Satan to fight against God, There'll, there's a seven-year covenant, right, that... 
uh, you know, we make with, with Satan, you know, and that marks right. the end, you know, and guys, I'm just telling you, man, um, dude, we, we've moved from birthing pains, uh, into tribulation and I feel it in my bones and I, I have really, I think I've, I've really put a lot of scripture to the events that are taking place right now, you know, including Revelation sixteen twelve. I told you, right? From the dust of uh, the river Euphrates shall prepare the way for the kings of the east, right? Well, United States moved out of Syria, which is where they're talking about, and Russia and China prepares to be ready. They, they look like they're ready to conquer the West. And, uh, you know, the 70 years, uh, Israel, all this, if you think about Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, um, the time of Nimrod, Nebuchadnezzar, the Assyrian, all these antichrists, Babylon falls after this, man. And look at us. We're on the verge of economic collapse. And look, they're putting the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which represents economic collapse, represents civil unrest, represents world war, represents... All these things. You see what I'm saying? All the connections. It's too much. Too much. You know, too much. The, the, right. the trumpets are ready to blow. And there's too much to, to be called a coincidence. It's too much scripture to back it up. It's too much fact. It's too much science. It's too much evidence. It's too much everything. You know, and I shouldn't be able to present this kind of a case to you on every damn thing I'm talking about. <laughs> Time is truly short, and, uh, you know, the message that I would like to get out to the listeners is, is that, look, uh, I, I, I know I can speak for myself and John when, when I say we are not sharing this information for any other reason than to... Um, to get it out there, yeah. we're, we're not trying to promote fear. We, we're, we're we are not promoting fear because, again, when 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 you know in your heart uh, that you know how it all turns out, how God is the ultimate victor in all this, absolutely, uh, that you have nothing to fear. Yes, we are living in amazing times, and time is short. Uh, what you can do with your time. Uh, for, for those of you that, that don't feel like you have the money or the resources uh, to, to prep, I would tell you, you do not need to worry about it. If you can, great. But at the end of the day, uh, I think that everything is going to is gonna play out just the way it was meant to be played out. Mm-hmm. And that for those that are truly of God and uh, love and know that He is our Savior, Savior and our true Christ, there is nothing to fear. In fact, there's something to be... Uh, excited about and and that is uh what is to come after very very well put brett and yes look those who fear are those who are not right with god and not right with themselves because they're not right with god if we put our faith and our trust in the father who is pulling all the strings he is calling the shots and when it's all said and done it ends the way he wants it to and we are eternally free and living in peace and love and joy together. You know, one thing people need to do is to place their faith in Christ, man, um, you know, and to pay attention to what's going on, right? To keep your ear to the ground, to prepare, you know, physically too, you know, store some water, some food, do what you can, but most of all, prepare spiritually, get right with God, get right with yourself, you know, love your family, love those that, you know, um, you love, you know, and let's come together, love, let's stop love, dividing. Love your neighbors, love, stop and, yeah, stop and talk to, to your neighbors, get to know them, you know, talk to, to random strangers, do random acts of kindness, you know, you just have no idea what kind of impact that can have. And, you know, and the thing, thing is something that John and I talked about, I truly believe that there is no such thing as charity. And what I mean by that is anything that you do to help somebody else, ultimately you are helping yourself and much more likely more so than the person that you are helping. So anything that you can do, uh, those random acts of kindness and, and, and helping others and, and, and truly loving, uh, you know, your loved ones and, and people that you don't know, uh, as you would yourself is the only way, uh, to, to, to survive this. Well, you know what? And Brett, don't just, 
you know, talk it, he walks it, man, he's, he's helped me, you know, personally, he's helped this, this show, this channel, he's, he, he, he does those things, man, in his, in his life, so he's not just saying it, these are, you know, he practices this, and let me just say, this message is to wake people up, it's to inform people, it's to let you know what's going on, it's to bring you truth, because there's so much controlled opposition, so much confusion, so much lies, I'm honestly giving you all my knowledge, in my honest opinion on what's going on, and I know Brett's doing the same, and it's the truth to the best we know it, and... Um, you know, let me also say, we have to come together, stop being divided by politics and all this other nonsense, and look, let's start helping one another, right? And that, you know, you can help me and uh, people like me and Brett that are sharing the truth, speaking the truth, spreading the truth by liking these videos, these podcasts, liking them, sharing them with people, showing them to people you think might be interested, sharing them around on social media, you know, um, you know, subscribing, uh, encouraging others to subscribe. And you know what, uh, dude, we, dude, this is a, a field where we are attacked constantly, attacked constantly, not just by trolls. I mean, you know, the government deploys tactics too, and we're incredibly censored. So if you can support, man, we need that help. We need that support. Um, don't put yourself out to do it, though. You know, if you're struggling and you're having a hard time, take care of you. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Always, what needs to be taken care of? To, there's always a way to give, and it, and it doesn't always have to be financially. That's right. So, you know, each one of us is gifted in their own special way. Yep. You know, God has, has bestowed gifts to each and every one of us, and we're all special. Um, so if, if it's not in the form of some kind of financial, uh, it could be any number of things yep. uh, that you could do. Those random acts of kindness could be uh, any number of, of acts, and uh, be looking for them. They're not hard to find. Look Absolutely. around yourself some sometime when you're out and around, and it doesn't take much to find somebody that is less fortunate than you. And it, your random act of kindness might be simply having a conversation with somebody that otherwise you may have walked the other way. Absolutely, Brett. Man, and you know what? It's not just you know this this show. You know, help help other people that do it. Help your neighbor. Help the guy in the grocery store. Help everyone man let's do something let's stop talking it let's walk it guys um i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap up man is there um any you know words you want to leave the people with before before i wrap it up no john i just listen man i want to thank you uh from the bottom of my heart and as a friend of yours um uh for all you do for all the time for all the effort for all the truth that you bring all the perspective that you bring uh, and you bring it on a regular basis, and I know it, it becomes as a cost to you. Um, and so I will, I will continue to support you. And, and I always love uh, speaking with you on this platform. I, I, I love this community, um, and uh, I, I look forward to come back and, and doing it again soon. Like again, I, I want everybody to know that uh, you know at the end of the day, there, if you can't hear my voice, I don't hear anything. Um, and it's because I know that I am protected uh, by God and His love. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what, Brett, man, you're an amazing dude, and I appreciate you coming on. Um, and, you know, guys, uh, I, I do want to say this, man. The last week or so, this show has taken off. I have almost doubled in subscribers. I've gained a bunch of followers on Spreaker. Um, dude, the, the views, the downloads, so we're doing something right. Um, you know, so please follow the podcast www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash best damn podcast. Um, you know, if you have pictures, uh, testimonies, anything, email the real best damn podcast at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, you want to call in the show? 513 783 1762. And guys, you know, uh, like right now, the, the Spreaker bill is up. You know, we need that kind of help, that kind of love, that kind of support. And if you don't have it, don't put yourself out for it. And I mean that. 
some people are not well off and they're struggling. Uh, you know, keep your money. You know, we don't need it from people that are struggling. But if it's in your heart and you can help, you know, please do so. You can donate to www.paypal.me forward slash best damn podcast. It's paypal.me forward slash best damn podcast. Or if you want to become a patron, you can do it for as little as a buck a month. And that's patreon.com forward slash best damn podcast. I just, you know, and please go to the YouTube channels, uh, like, share, subscribe. It's youtube.com forward slash C forward slash the best damn podcast. And the backup channel is best damn podcast. Um, we're on all social media, Facebook at best damn podcast, Instagram at best damn podcast, Twitter at the real best damn and all major podcasting platforms. It includes iHeart, Spotify, Deezer, you name it. We're on it. So you know, guys, please, you know, like, share, subscribe, uh, support, show your love. Um, you know, I'm doing everything I can to grind all this stuff out there for you. I mean, I'm working around the clock, dude, and I really hope it pays off. And I really hope that some people wake up and I hope some people find God. And I hope some people get some clarity and, you know, it's not for fear, man. It's, it's for truth. When you, when you have knowledge and understanding of something, you don't fear it. So. I appreciate all you guys, man. I, I love the hell out of all of you. I, I know a lot of you personally, and I'm just I'm grateful for everyone, and I'm grateful for Brett. Brett's done so much for for me personally, and for this channel. I mean, he's he truly is a giving, loving, good guy, man. So, um, and everybody who has been, you know, who's gave in the past, who shared in the past, all that stuff, man. I I'm grateful. So, um, I love all of you, man. I love all of you, and I just. I want you to know that, and we're going to get through this. We just got to stick together, and we got to help each other, you know, and I'm going to continue to expand. I'm going to continue to push. I'm going to continue to grow, and I'm going to continue to create content. The links will be in the description of this uh, podcast episode. It's free download. Uh, also, this will be uploaded to YouTube. The link will be in the description there, man. Um, join the Discord. That's the BDP community. It's free. I don't charge you like some channels do. Um, you know, that's, that's why I depend on donations. I don't charge for nothing. It's all free, man. You know, the, the truth is free. God's word is free, man. Love is free. So let's help each other out. Let's come together, man. That sounds great, man. That sounds awesome. So remember guys, Jesus is the truth, the way and the life. I love you guys. God bless you. And I will see you next time. Night. I love you. Have a happy new year. Talk to you soon, John.